to this computer. Okay, um, I believe I am now recording. So I just wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how the course is going to work. Um, you do have in Zoom, or I'm sorry, in Canvas, where everything starts, you're going to have an orientation that's due on that first Friday of the week. So you have about four days to get the orientation done. And then once you're finished with the orientation, um, hopefully you finish it earlier rather than later, because then after that, you do have to master a specific 39 topic. Um, now, in the orientation, you'll have to do what is called the knowledge check. So once I give you um, your username and your password, you'll be able to log into Alex, open the course, and then the first thing that you're going to see is this. So give my computer one second to connect and I will show you. You'll see the welcome to Alex. It'll kind of go through the different screens explaining to you how it's a personalized or um, learning space or it has artificial intelligence, same sort of thing. So it figures out what you know and then what you need to know and then finds the best path for success for you. Okay. And that's how it will work. So what pops up for each student is dependent on what the goals are that I set for the course and your prior knowledge. So the first thing you're going to see a lot the first couple of times that you use Alex is these little pop up windows that have these orange outlines. Um, they're just to kind of get your focus on certain things so that you know what each um, icon or each button does. So this one says that the three horizontal lines here is my main menu. So if you ever hear me tell you click on the menu button, that's the menu button that, that I am referring to. Um, and then it tells you your notifications are here. So if I email you inside of Alex, you'll see that notification there. However, usually once you sign up for the Remind Texting, texting is probably going to be the way that I communicate with you throughout the semester. Just because it, you get the message faster and you're more likely to read it if it pops up on your cell phone versus if there's an email that you'd have to go in and actively check. So usually I don't send emails here, but if I happen to, um, that's where you would be notified. And then the first thing that Alex is going to have you do is what's called a tools tutorial just to make sure that you understand what all these little buttons do inside of Alex. And so it'll have you practice some of that functionality, like use your keyboard to type in for 14, then the box says to clear it and then undo it and then now click next. So you're just gonna follow those prompts in these orange outlined boxes. Now, for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip this tutorial just so I can jump into the next thing that you'll see. So the second half of the tutorial is actually going to start to get you to draw. Okay, so you'll draw number lines, you'll draw graphs of lines, graphs of parabolas, things like that. But it's definitely going to help you to learn these functionalities. Now, if you happen to forget how to graph a line, once you get to the topics that require you to graph a line, then there will be a little tutorial on the side that you can kind of go and refresh. How do I do this in the computer? So if you don't remember this from day one until you know week two when you have to use it, there will be um, a button for you to get a refresher on it, okay? So let's skip the tutorial. Once you finish that tutorial, there's a requirement in the Canvas orientation. And I'll go back just so you can see it. And that's what's going to be a little bit tricky about this course is you are going to have to toggle back and forth between Canvas and Alex a lot. So Alex is the home where all of our course content lies. Okay, so this is the structure of what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, how you're supposed to do it. And then Alex is where you go to do your topics and where you go to take your tests. Okay, so one of the things inside this orientation is um, whether or not you actually signed up for um, this Alex registration. So in the Alex registration, in order for you to get credit for that assignment and move on to the rest of the orientation and complete it, you have to take this initial knowledge check. And you already saw that in order to take the knowledge check, you had to one, sign in, 
and two, do the tool, tools tutorial. Once those two things are done, then you can finally start your knowledge check. And the knowledge check is the actual math question. Okay, so this is where they're really gonna ask me math problems to see what my prior knowledge is. Now it just says, make sure you stay focused, don't get distracted. If you need to, you need to have paper and pencil so that you can show your work and uh, crunch out your numbers. Um, and make sure you take your time, right? Uh, you wanna be as productive as possible. You want to show us everything you know. You don't wanna to try to rush through it and just get it done, okay? Because if you just rush through it and you don't get a lot done, guess what that means? That means you're gonna have a lot more to do later, okay? Whereas if you take your time with this first initial quiz and you do as best as you could possibly do, the less amount of work that you'll have to do later, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit get started. So it's telling me again, this is my icon over here. I can click it. When it appears, I can use it. If it doesn't appear, I shouldn't need the calculator. I should be able to do this on my own, okay? Um, and then it says, be very careful of these two buttons down here. Don't choose the I don't know button unless you absolutely must, okay? I always tell people to try the problem and type in whatever you think is the answer. Because with math, a lot of the time, the problem is not one's ability, but it's one's confidence in their ability. And so sometimes the, the processes that are going on in your brain might actually be correct, but the fact that you second guess yourself and click, I don't know, you don't get any credit for anything, okay? And I want you to try to get the most true credit that you can. So if you do have any kind of inclination on what they're asking for, try it type it in there. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. And it's no better than leaving it than saying, I don't know, or leaving it blank, okay? But if it happens to be right, then, then you have another skill that you don't have to work on later, okay? So I always suggest not to click the I don't know button unless you absolutely feel you have to. So I'm gonna click start my knowledge check. And so here it's gonna start asking me questions. Now again, be very careful because these are real close to each other, the I don't know button and the submit. The one thing that I do like about the I don't know button is it always makes you make sure that you want to click the I don't know button before it actually lets you do it. So it always pops up this message and says, hey, are you sure you want to click this? If you say, okay, I understand. Only click it if I'm absolutely sure. And then you click it again, it will mark it as you don't understand or you don't have that skill. Now, if you try it and you get it wrong, depending on what you answer, you may check off a couple of skills, just not all the skills that were required for this particular problem, which is again, another reason why I try to refrain folks from clicking on that I don't know button. Just try something and if it's right, yay. If it's wrong, we'll see. Do you get no credit? Do you get one or two skills checked off? Or you know, how's that gonna play out for you? So I'm gonna, because for the sake of time, um, these questions will ask you anywhere between 10 to 36 questions. It just depends on how you're progressing. Um, if you get a problem right, it'll ask you one that's harder. If you get a problem wrong, it'll ask you one that's easier. Once you start toggling and you're kind of in the same level of topics, um, you're not getting the harder ones correct and you're not getting, and you're always getting the easier ones correct. It kind of levels itself off and knows exactly where you are as far as your ability. So it may not go all the way up to 36. Okay. And if you're getting them all wrong, I think 10 is the least number of questions that you'll see. So I'm going to skip it and I'm going to say that I know very little of college algebra because this is two courses in one. Okay. And so I'm assuming that most of you guys are going to come in here not knowing a whole lot about college algebra although you may know a little bit about intermediate algebra. So I'm going to click the first one and then go to my results. So once you go through the knowledge check, it will tell you your number. It will tell you how many topics out of the total 453, how many it is, how many of those topics you know already. Now, because I said little knowledge, of course, it gave me a very small number, eight. And that means I'm basically going to have to learn the other 445 topics throughout the rest of the semester. Okay. And it's just basically saying that these shaded pieces in yellow and teal and in blue 
by the stuff that I know and everything else in the gray is the stuff that I'll be learning throughout the class, okay? And it can break it down and you can figure out which topics is it, was it specifically that I knew. So I knew three of the arithmetic topics um, and there are seven left. And so here I knew none out of there. I don't think I knew any of those. Where's my seal? There it is. So I knew one of these, but there's 56 others that I need to learn um, and so forth. So I'm going to hit continue. And then I can go back and forth between views. So there's two views. Now there's the Alex view, the Alex Pi view, which is this one. And this is the one that um, you'll typically find more useful. Um, but there's also a timeline view. And the timeline view is not really going to help us. If I could disable this view, I would, um, but I cannot, I don't have the ability to, because um, I don't have any indicators. I have everything open for you. I don't have like a set um, due date inside Alex, because if I do that, it starts messing up people's um, information once those dates come and you haven't finished everything that you're supposed to, it starts making things really, really confusing inside the program. And I don't wanna have any of those errors. So what I do is I leave it open till May, the end of the semester for you inside Alex. However, you do have milestones that you need to uh, complete each week. And those are outlined inside Canvas. So notice here, even after I finish my whole orientation in week one, I still have to come here and master these 39 topics. Now it may be that the eight topics that I already mastered according to my, um, my results from my knowledge check, right? I already have eight done. Those may be part of the 39, they may not be part of the 39, okay? So what I suggest for people to do is before you even begin, I highly recommend that you go here and you just copy these topics. And then I'm gonna go into Word and I'm going to paste these topics in here. It becomes very difficult if you try to do all this on your phone. So I highly suggest that you're using a laptop or a desktop computer when completing the coursework. Um, I do know that some people try to use their phone throughout the whole course and it's just not efficient. Um, so notice that I have here, these are all the 39 topics. Now there is a book connected to our Alex. Um, we don't have to actually buy the book. You will have access to it within each topic. Um, but there are a specific 39 topics that I need you to complete. And if you read this description, it's the same description for every week. It says, to stay on task with the course schedule, be sure to master the following topics this week. Completing these topics is how your weekly grade will be evaluated. The average of your weekly grades is 40% of your overall grade in the class. So if you mastered 39 topics from objective one, these specific 39, um, by Sunday the 24th, your score will be determined as the number of topics from this list that you mastered um, divided by 39 and then represented as a percentage. If you mastered the 35, 39, these 39, or even if you did a little bit more because you had time or a lot of them were already finished, if you do more than that, of course, you'll receive a 100 for that week, okay? Um, I always tell people you never have to wait till a deadline to do anything. Always, always, always work ahead. That way, if anything happens, you have wiggle room and you're not um, in an ugly predicament or situation where you're going to be stressing yourself out. Okay. So always try to get ahead, especially at the beginning when you take that knowledge check. You may already know a lot. Keep that momentum. If you've already got a bunch done, use that to stay ahead the whole rest of the course. Okay. Don't use it to procrastinate when you can. No, this is what I do. I take my list here and then I go into my Alex. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my menu and I'm gonna click on reports. 
And then what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go look at the current objective. And I'm going to say view full report. Now, this is objective one. In Alex, I labeled them units, but these are the objectives. Objective one, objective two, objective three, objective four, and so forth. Okay. Right now, I'm on this. Now, apparently, I know six from objective one. So I may have six done. But objective one isn't going to get all completed in just week one. So I need to make sure that these topics that I have mastered um, are the topics that are on this list. So I'm going to do a side by side window just so that I can see. So I have reading a point. I don't see reading. These are all S's, solving, 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 solving. Oh, yes, I do. I have reading the point in the plane. So you can either delete this, you can highlight it just to say that you finished it. I have plotting a point, done. Um, finding outputs, I don't see finding outputs on here. Notice that all the topics are order of operations, solving equations, and more solving equations. So I don't really have this topic anywhere in my list for this week. That may be a topic that I need to do next week and I already have it done, okay? I don't see table for a linear equation anywhere in this list. Um, I do see order of operations with whole numbers, with whole numbers and grouping symbols. So this one is done. And then I also have with whole numbers and exponents basic. And so that one is done. So, so far right now, all I have are these four done. And if I don't do anything else by Sunday, um, I will receive, let's see, four out of 39 times 100. I will receive a 10 on my grade for week one if I didn't do anything from here, okay? So um, if there's ever anything in learned, you can also mark those off. So you always want to go first each week. You want to open up that list of topics, copy and paste it into Word, and then go into your reports for that particular objective. And then you want to see under your learned category and your mastered category, is there anything that I can cross out? Okay. Once you've done that, then you're going to go back to your menu and click on learn. And from here, you're going to be working on all of your topics. So every single topic is always going to start with the learning page. So this is the page that's going to explain the information, show you how they want the answer, and then you will try it on your own. Now notice that here the calculator is disabled, so I'm not able to use it. Um, there are videos here. If I click on video, these are the videos from the section of the book that is tied to this topic. And you're certainly welcome to watch these videos, okay? You also have what's called instructor resources. And this is actually a video that I created. So it says it's gonna go to another weight. Um, I'm gonna say, do not show me that again, so that it just goes. And so these, I have all put them all into YouTube. So once you click on those links, it will go through that particular topic with certain numbers. I can't do every examples. And um, it will go through the whole thing and it will show you how I suggest or I recommend that you work them out. So whenever you're doing a topic, you do have the option to text me a question about it. Um, but what I always recommend is that you read the learning page first. If that doesn't make sense, watch my video. If that doesn't make sense, watch their videos, and if it still doesn't make sense, then you need to be texting me immediately so that you can get through that particular um, topic. You don't wanna waste too much time on one particular topic. You wanna get through them as fast as possible because you have a certain number that you have to complete each week, okay? Now, before you complete this topic, you kind of wanna make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that this is one of those topics that's on my list. So I hit this drop down arrow and it pops up all of this stuff. 
Now solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable, variables on the same side. So solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable, um, variables on the same side. So that is this topic right here. So I'm gonna highlight that in green because that's the one that I'm working on, okay? Now I'm gonna start this problem and I'm gonna actually try to do it, okay? Now here's how Alex works. It's not like a typical homework assignment where I'm gonna to get to do this problem and if I get it right, I move on. If I get it wrong, then I have to do another one, okay? It's a little bit more complicated than that. This program is mastery based. So you not only have to get it right, but you have to get it right a few times in a row in order for the computer to say, yep, they understand the topic fully and completely and they're allowed to move on to the next one, okay? So it does tell you here that this bar is gonna tell you how many correct answers you need in a row. However, in order for you to lie it up faster, if you get it right a second time in quote unquote a row, you get double credit. So really, I only need to get it right three times for this to light up completely because I'll get credit for the first time I get it right. I'll get double credit for the second time I get it right. And then I'll get another double credit for the third time I get it right. So I only need to get this problem right three times in a row. Now, if I happen to get it right twice in a row and then I get it wrong, it's only gonna take away one credit at a time. It will never take away double credit unless it takes away one credit and it gives you a second chance, actually a third chance to get the problem right again, and you still don't get it right, then it will take away the double credit. So I'll get it wrong a couple of times just so you can see what I'm talking about. So let me see. Um, let me do this problem really quick. So I'm going to say negative 12 and let's see what it says. It says correct. So notice it lit up one green bar. Then I'm going to do the next problem. I'm going to say negative five. Now I got it right the second time in a row. So notice that up here it says because it was two in a row, I get the double credit. Now, if I get it right again, it's gonna be again in a row, so it's gonna give me double credit. But I'm gonna get it wrong intentionally. So let me make, be careful I write in the wrong answer. Otherwise, um, if I type in <laughs> coincidentally the right answer, then it will defeat the purpose of what I was trying to do. So I'm gonna say one. I noticed that it took away one choice, one green um, bar. Now it's saying try again. So it's giving me a second chance at this. So let's say I say the answer is zero. If I were to put the correct answer, it would give me only one green mark because I messed up my progress of doing it correct in a row, right? I, I got it wrong once in the middle. So that just throws off the whole streak, okay? So my streak off, so I'm not gonna get double credit. But if I were to get this correct, it would light up that third green bar again. But I'm gonna get it wrong. And so I lost that credit, okay? So now I have to get the problem right three times again, because the first one I'm gonna get green, the second one I'm gonna get a double, and even the third one I'm gonna get a double. And so then I'll be able to get the whole credit. So let's see. I think that's right. I might have done it too fast. Yep. Okay, we need to get it right again. So let's try that one. And let's try that one i might have done that one too fast oh nope i did it okay so i got my third one in a row i would have gotten two two credits but i only needed one more so i'm finished so when i hit next 
Notice that it says, yay, you've done one, um, but I still have 80 topics left. So I'm going to go to my paper because I did finally master this one. So I'm going to mark that one off yellow, and then I'm going to go continue to my path. And then identify what is the next problem that they want me to work on. So I already showed you this, use this to see the other topics. Um, Another thing that I wanna make sure you do is that you set your filters correctly so that you get the correct stuff lined up here. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that over here you have unit one highlighted because that's the unit we're supposed to be working on. Once you get to unit two, then you'll make sure that this has unit two. There's eight units total, okay? The first two units you need, you need these two units to take the midterm, you need these two units completed to take the 320 final exam. Then you need these two units to complete the midterm for 1414. And then you need these two units complete to do the final exam for 1414. So it's all progressive. Another thing you wanna make sure is that you have your ready to learn highlighted and that you have um, any topic or goal topic. Um, they should be one and the same, so it really wouldn't matter which one you had, um, but you definitely want to keep it on that. Now, I am going to just look at this title and go to my thing here, and it looks like it's this topic, so I'm going to put it in green. That's the one I'm working on. Once I master it, then I will put it in yellow. And that's how you're going to proceed each week. You're just going to do your topics, make sure that they're on the list of topics for you to do that week, and then mark them off as you go and get them all done. Okay. Um, that's the way it's going to work every single week. Now, what happens eventually if I do complete? Uh, let me go back to Canvas. So let's say I do finish the topics for week one, I get my 100 for week one. Then I do the topics that we have here for week two. I get my credit for week two, so on and so forth. Um, and then what happens when we get down to the midterm? Well, what happens with the midterm is week, week four's goal will be all of the topics for unit two. So by the time you get to the end of week four, you'll have completed all of the topics for objective one and objective two or unit one and unit two. Once you've done those, what's going to happen is that the midterm review will be enabled for you. So right now, if I click on the menu option and I click on assignments, there is no midterm in here for me, okay? And it's telling me how much of unit one I have. Now I can click on view upcoming and it will show me the midterm but there's a prerequisite on that midterm. I have to complete unit two in order for this to then be tossed into um, the current assignments. Once that's in the current assignments, then I can click on it and I can begin it. Once I get an 80% on that midterm review, um, and it'll tell you here, you know, what the situation is, um, the prerequisite is that I get 100% score on the unit two. Go back to my assignment list. If I try to click on the midterm exam, it doesn't wanna let me. But the requirement for, to open the midterm exam is that you have an 80% on the midterm review, okay? So everything is gonna be consequent. So of course, the final review, you're gonna have to have unit four completed. And in order for you to take the final exam, you're going to have to have um, an 80% on the final review. Let me see, there we go. And then Alex is everything, one stop shop, right? It's got everything for both courses in it. So it also has, you know, that I'll have to complete this unit to do the midterm review. I'll have to do the midterm review to do the midterm exam, so on and so forth, okay? So that's going to be the process. And all of that is outlined in Alex. So it tells me in week four, this is all the stuff I'm gonna have to do. I have to complete those last 10 topics. Then I have to, once those objectives are done, I'll be able to click on the review. Once I earn an 80% on that review, 
then I need to come here and read these midterm exam information page. And once I read that, it's actually going to tell me to read this. So even here it says, read the midterm exam paperwork upload assignment before taking the midterm exam in Alex. So you basically have to read two pages before you go into Alex and start that midterm, okay? And it's like that for the final, it's like that for the 1414 midterm and the 1414 final. And I do wanna point out one little weird thing that you'll probably forget by the time we get here, but that's why I have it in Canvas. It says that in addition to the 320 final exam for week eight, you also have some topics that you're going to have to do in 1414. Okay. So, yes, you want to take your final exam ASAP, knock that out, but you also have to remember to leave time for yourself this week to complete those 1414 topics. And in order to see those, you do have to go to your 1414 class. So, if I click here, um, notice that it has my um, 36 topics that I'm gonna have to master for week eight. So not only do you have to take the final exam, but you also have to master 36 topics from 1414, all in week eight. The good thing about week eight is week eight happens after spring break. So if you can at all, you can utilize a little bit of that time during spring break to knock out the uh, final exam maybe the weekend before spring break starts, knock out that final exam, and then um, and then you have the week after final exam, after spring break to um, master these 36 topics, okay? So you have like two weeks in between when the week seven topics are due and then when the week eight topics and the final exam for 320 are due. Okay. I think that pretty much covers everything. Anything else that you'll need to know, it will all be included in that um, orientation. And now that I'm thinking about it, there's one biggie that I need to point out. Um, it says, welcome preliminary information and introductions. And I put this in red, bold, because it's very, very, very important. Um, in this class, it's a remote class. And so what you signed on for is uh, seven hours of classes. Now, typically the way it works in a regular semester is however many hours you have class time that you would be in a classroom sitting with your teacher, your teacher lecturing and doing activities and all of that. You're also required to work on your quote unquote homework outside of class, right? And the typical rule is for each hour that you spend in class, you should be spending that same amount of time outside of class. So for a class that would meet, you know, three hours per week, you'd be spending six hours total working on that material for that class. Three hours sitting in front of the teacher and then three hours working on your own each week. Now, because we've signed up for two classes and those have a total of seven hours, right? That means you should be spending seven hours with me remotely because this is an online class, not necessarily a face-to-face -face class. So you'd be working seven hours and then you'd have to work another seven hours on your own. And so that's where the 14 hours comes from. Not only that, and when I read my reviews from last semester, the biggest review that I received from the students completing this courses in previous semesters is that I really should have warned, quote unquote, <laughs> or advised um, students beforehand how much time they were going to need to spend in this course to be successful. Um, a lot of them, it came as a surprise. They didn't realize that they were going to have to spend that much time. And even though I mentioned this in the, the, the orientation, in those previous semesters, no one took it seriously and they just brushed it off and just, you know, continued thinking that it was going to be a course that didn't require much time. But I am trying to make it as obvious and as important as I can that you really, really understand that you have to spend a good amount of time working on the material in this course. It is not easy and that is, um, 
there are some people that may be able to get away with not having to do 14 hours per week, and that's fine. I'm not penalizing people for that. What I am concerned with is, are you getting these topics that I asked you to do each week done? If you are getting those topics each week done, it really doesn't matter how much time you spend in Alex. I'm not worried about that. That doesn't affect your grade. I am just letting you know that in mostly everyone's case, this was the number of hours they needed to work in there in order to get those topics done, okay? So if you're a lot faster at math, it might not take you that long. If you're a lot slower at math, it might take you even longer than that. If you're just in the middle, it might take you exactly four hours to get it done, 14 hours each week. Now, 14 hours total, 14 hours each week. Now, here's the situation. You could spend two hours on it every day, Monday through Sunday, right? That'll get you 14 hours. Two hours, seven days a week, done. But chances are not everyone's available seven days a week, right? You have to have one day off maybe, hopefully. Um, so what I recommend is that you actually spend two hours and 45 minutes five days a week. Now you can do the typical Monday through Friday. You can shift it however you want. Um, take Tuesday and Thursday off. Take Saturday and Sunday off. Whatever days are convenient for you. That's not important which days. What's important is that you're doing it five days a week. This is the best option in my opinion. And I even make some suggestions. You really wanna make sure that the math sticks. You don't wanna learn and then forget. So what I suggest people to do is to work on it for about an hour and a half to two hours. Never go beyond two hours, okay? So work on it for about an hour and a half, then take a break of at least 30 minutes, maybe even an hour. In that 30 minutes in an hour, you let your brain like refresh and restart. And it, it helps to let the previous information that you received in that hour and a half stick. Okay. And then go back and finish the other hour and 15 minutes that you need. Okay. Um, if you include a 30 minute break, then that means you'll definitely have to be available for about three hours and 15 minutes, five days a week. Now, whether you do that early in the morning, you spread it out, you do some in the morning and some in the afternoon, or you do it all in the middle of the night. It doesn't matter, that's up to you, okay? Um, another option is to spend three hours and 30 minutes for four days a week. Again, you can choose whichever four days those are, whatever's convenient for your schedule. But in that case, I suggest that you work for an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, and then take a break and then work the other hour and a half or hour and 15 minutes so that you get the whole time in. Um, but again, if you come, if you're doing one of these options and it turns out that in day, you know, let's say I'm doing the four day a week um, option and it turns out in day three, I finished all the topics I needed to do that week. You have a choice then. You can either use your fourth day to get ahead or you can take that fourth day off because you're already done for that week, okay? Um, but these are just examples of how to spread out the time. Notice that the least amount of days that you work on it, the more time you're gonna be required. You definitely don't wanna wait to do it just on Saturday and Sunday. Because look what that means. It means you have seven hours to do. And if you're taking a break every two hours, I mean, there goes your whole day, Saturday and Sunday. The whole day completely gone because you're trying to do seven hours of work in two days, okay? So I don't ever, ever recommend people do this, ever, okay? Um, this is also a reason why I suggest people do not wait until the deadline for the orientation to complete the orientation. I suggest everyone complete it on Tuesday if you can, that way you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, five days at least to finish those first 39 topics, okay? So with that said, I'll leave this to you because I definitely want you to read through that when you get to um, that item in the orientation. Another thing about the orientation is there are a bunch of things to do. These are progressive things to do. So you cannot move on to one until you complete the other. Let me show you what the student view looks like because I'm sure when you see it, it's not going to look like the way I see it. Everything looks like I can click on it in my view. But if I go to the student view, notice that 
I can't click on anything but the first option. Once I click on that option, then I can go to the next button and then I can see the next page. If I go back home, it's assuming that I just read on the page I was on. And if I did, I'm allowed to go to the next thing, okay? And then once I complete that, I'll be allowed to go on to the next thing, so on and so forth. So make sure that you leave yourself, even though it says it's all due January 22nd, you definitely want to get the ball rolling because there are a couple of assignments that you're going to have to wait on me to come into Canvas and mark it complete. Okay. And so you don't want to wait till the 22nd and hope that I'm online at what 11:58 PM so that I can mark it complete. Okay. You want to make sure that you get everything done as soon as possible. But with that said, this video is already pretty long. So I'm going to end it here and I wish you all a great productive semester.